The song is in D minor, so be wary of that. Know your D minor scale, that's one flat. Make sure you play that. And so I'm going to start with actually the second part. The second part, I'm going to be putting the music right here. Doot, doot. Okay, there you go. <laughs> There's the music for you. Second part. For those of you who don't know the tenor clef, it is as if you're playing here in the third position, just shifted over one string. So that's just what the tenor clef is. It starts right here on the four, on the F natural. Then shift back, expansion. Then shift back up to fourth position. And be wary, there is a bass clef there to take you down into the C string. When you get to measure six, play quiet. And that is all self-explanatory from there. Let's take our eyes to measure 10, where we have this repeating arpeggio up. Make it nice and smooth. You can also play it with the harmonic. Be wary and don't try to over slide that. Let's move on to some of the accidentals. We have a C sharp happening in 17. Make sure that you follow that C sharp in measure 17. And then we're going to shift over to one of the harder parts, and that's the triplets, measure 26. So we start right before that. And I suggest doing a one, one, four, one. And then staying there and one, one, four, four. So this is that tempo. And then shift back down. And instead of playing a four there, you want to shift to the one there because you're going to play a three on the G sharp, G natural, four on the E flat, one on the G natural, and four on the B flat. It looks like this in measure 28. Very essentially do that. It's quite difficult to get that really smooth if you do here in the first position. So measure 27, we're going into that. There's a slide. There I am, first triplet, second triplet, shift back. And then shift back one more time. One, three, one. Shift up, one, four. At tempo, measure 27. Let's move on to the second page in the Il Padrino. I love this. You go right into you are leading the music as the umpa pad. And lighten up when the first part comes in, three measures after that. You want to stay nice and smooth. I want you to really pay attention to the bowings, especially looking at what measure 56. Five, four, three. Measure, measure 56, 5, 4, 3. Measure 53. 6, 5, 4, 3. Am I counting that right? <laughs> 6, 5, 4, 3. Yeah, sorry. There it is. I like doing that when I arrange, um, when I arrange valses, I really like to put a little moving part in the um papa, especially when there's a held note in the top part. You have that also happening a little bit differently in measure 59. And right after that, we want to play a 1-4. And then you can either go back and expand 
or stay up there. Four one one, and then shift back. Expand. That was measure sixty four. Sixty five. Stay light. Moving on down to the last line, we have those E G sharps. C natural, C sharp. Moving on to the second page, we have the third measure starting in. I really like playing there in third position, that one, four, one, four, C, E flat, C, E flat. And then going on to measure 91, we have an A to F sharp. So play the A with a four and then play the G with a one. So shift over one, three, three, then one, four, four, and then open D, then legato, then one, three. Here, back to four, third position, four, one, one, four, first position. And this is unison, just octaves difference. And that is all you need to worry about for your part. There's going to be an explanation I will give for measure 20, 119, 118. And 119 is the same fingerings. And it's going to be the same for the first part as well. I'm going to explain shortly. You have this. It's a zero, one, four, four. One, four. So you want to play it like that. And then the last three measures. One, four, two. Now let's start talking about the first part.